गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस इक्वालिटी ऑफ व्हाट दिस कंटेंट आई लेफ्ट आई मिस अंडरस्टूड दैट इन योर सिलेबस इक्वालिटी फॉर व्हाट is there but later on i found in your codes equality of what is there equality for what and equality of what are not same thing it is different though it is not in your codes but in my earlier class i dealt equality for what and in that deliberation i understood equality for what basically means the purpose of equality why we should discuss talk or think about equality or in other words the purpose of equality is to reduce inequality and inequality is the prime reason of the poverty so equality is to reduce poverty but when we talk about equality of what it means we may understand it that in which context we can think and bring equality what is the context in which context we should think about equality there are mainly three context in which we can think about equality the context of welfare the context of resources and the context of capability so in other words principles of equality can be followed in the context of welfare resources and capability right so equality of what means equality of welfare equality of resources and equality of capability so in the context of welfare what does equality mean in the context of resources what does equality mean in the context of capability what does equality mean the elaboration of this meaning of equality in different context constitute an understanding of equality of what so today we will discuss these three variety of understanding of equality equality of welfare equality of resources and equality of capability you know for utilitarian <coughs> utilitarian means james mentham jess mill james mill jimmy bentham james stuart mill these they are the utilitarians now for utilitarians distribution of equality means distribution of welfare 
सो नाउ वी आर डिस्कसिंग इक्वालिटी ऑफ वेलफेयर सो टू यूटिलिटेरियंस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ इक्वालिटी मीन्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वेलफेयर नाउ वट इज वेलफेयर टू बेंथम वेलफेयर मीन्स हैप्पीनेस विच इज अंडरस्टूड एज द नेट बैलेंस ऑफ प्लेजर ओवर पेन दैट ए इंडिविजुअल एक्सपीरियंस एवरी इंडिविजुअल एक्सपीरियंस बोथ प्लेजर एंड पेन but we can say that a person is happy only when his net pleasure is more than his or her net pain so welfare basically means to bentham happiness in modern sense welfare is also identified with desire or preference satisfaction i have a desire if my desire is fulfilled if my preference is accepted then certainly i get satisfaction and i feel a sense of welfare in modern sense in modern society people may have more or less welfare and accordingly they lead a better life or a worse life we cannot say that nobody is having any sense of welfare so welfare welfare here means happiness desire preferences satisfaction right so these are the various synonyms of welfare so every individual has certain sense of welfare some individuals have more welfare and some individuals have less welfare if the individuals are having more welfare then they lead a better life if they have less welfare then they lead a worse life but we cannot say that individuals do not have any welfare right we cannot say that now a society that believes in distributing welfare i am repeating here welfare means happiness preference desire desire fulfillment a society that believes in the distribution of welfare equally will not worry about how much resources a individual get so the if the main goal of the society is to distribute happiness equally then for that society it doesn't matter how much a individual get let me give you example <clears throat> then you can understand it very well suppose a is having a test for an expensive car and b is having a test for a bicycle then according to the principles of equality of welfare it is fair to provide a car to a and a bicycle to b and according to this principle principles of equality of welfare the happiness 
a car produced in A is equivalent to the happiness a bicycle produced in B. So certainly we can say that the car is not equivalent to bicycle, but the happiness produced by the car and bicycle is the same and it is fair to provide a car to A, a cycle to B. So, if the society is guided by the principles of equality of welfare, then that society is not at all worried about who gets what, when or how. That society only bothers about whether the resources are instrumental in securing happiness for the individual or not. Whether individuals, the happiness of the individual, whether the happiness of the individual is equal to the happiness of the other individual. Their society only bothers about that. It does not bother about who gets what, how much, when or how. It only bothers about whether the car is producing happiness, whether the bicycle is producing happiness, whether A is equally happy as B or B is equally happy as A. It only bothers about that. Now, under such understanding, it is imperative that we fulfill, we fulfill everyone's welfare equality irrespective of inequality entailed in the distribution of resources. Now, one can sense it. Under the principles of equality of welfare, resources may be distributed unequally Distrib uh, i mean resources will be distributed unequally but it must fulfill everywhere everyone's welfare equality. It must produce happiness. Right? Does it make any sense? Are you convinced? Certainly liberals, they are not convinced. Right. The ideal of equality of welfare, why they are not convinced and why they are not happy with the principles of equality of welfare? Because it is because the ideal of equality of welfare does not promote the cause of fairness. It does not deal with the concept of self-respect and it does not deal with the concept of fraternity. How? How? It's because equality of welfare does not explain why 
B is happy with the bicycle and A is happy with the car. Right? And I can remember Bentham's famous line, Pushpin is as good as poetry because both produces happiness. So can we say that the car is equivalent to a bicycle because both produces happiness, car produces happiness in A and bicycle produces happiness in B. Can you equate car with the bicycle? Can you equate the owner of the car and the owner of the bicycle? Can A and B develop a sense of fraternity between them? Is it a is it fair? So these are some of the questions that is unanswered by the supporter of equality of welfare. And most of the liberals consider this ideal morally objectionable and hence they hold it unattractive as the yardstick of social policy. So liberals they did not satisfy and they for them equality of welfare it is unattractive. It cannot be the yardstick of social policy. Puspin is not equivalent to poetry and the happiness the Puspin produces is or cannot be equivalent to happiness a poetry produces. A happiness a car produces for A cannot be equivalent to the happiness a bicycle produces for B. Issues of fairness, issues of self-respect, issues of fraternity, that, ha that, that have not been dealt by this concept equality of welfare. The second is the equality of resources. So, we understood in the context of welfare, what does that equality mean? In the context of welfare, equality means producing only happiness. It doesn't care about who gets what much when and how. It doesn't care about whether it is the distribution is fair or not. It doesn't care about the self-respect of the agents. It doesn't care about the concept of fraternity. It only holds that Puspin is as good as poetry. Now, in the context of resources, when we talk about resources, it means distribution of resources. What does that equality mean? How to understand equality in the context of resources, in the context of distribution of resources? John Rawl and Dorkins, they have expressed this idea, equality of resources. Now for them, 
equal distribution of resources makes individual equal. So how individual will be equal? Only when the distribution of resources is proper. If there is equal distribution of resources, then individual will be equal. In the first case, how the individual will be equal? Only when the society or state produces happiness in the individual. Then every individual is equal. Now to Dorkins, equality or equal distribution of resources can be done through two stages. First, the ambition of sensitive auction. Second, the insurance scheme. So before it, now, now before we understand these two stages, let's understand what is exactly equality of resources or what equality of resources aims at. It aims at to secure for everyone an equal set of resources and an equal opportunity to convert those resources into welfare. I am repeating, equality of resources aims at how to secure how I mean it, it aims to secure for everyone an equal set of resources that means how everyone will get equal set of resources and an equal opportunity to convert those resources into their welfare. Having that resources cannot serve the purpose. Opportunities must be given to them so that they will convert those resources into their welfare. Now how well people do this? How well people do this and resulting inequality stemming from their choices are not core concern of this conception. Right. What does it mean? So let me let me take one minute back, break, then I'm coming back. Welcome back. I said the main aim of equality of resources is to secure for everyone an equal set of resources and an equal opportunity to convert those resources into their welfare. Now how people will do this? How people will convert, how people will get an opportunity. 
so that people can convert these resources into their welfare individual choices are not same right hence inequality may emerge due to the diverse choices of individual and if inequality emerges due to the diverse choices of individual this is not the concern of this conception equality of resources does not deal with does not deal with inequality that is emerge due to the diverse choices of individual so you can get a sense what is the goal what is the aim of equality of resources now let's come to these two stages through which dorkins is trying to distribute resources equally i said these two stages are known as the ambition of sensitive auction and second is the insurance scheme now how to understand these two stages so let's try to understand it through an example imagine a situation where 10 people arrived in a desert deserted island and let's further assume that everyone had some same everyone had same natural talents and that island has abundant resources and no native population so you have to imagine that 10 people arrived in a deserted island first you have to assume all these 10 individuals are having same natural talents third that island is having abundant resources fourth there is no native population in that island <clears throat> now how to divide the available resources equally so that everyone will get an equal opportunity to convert these resources into their welfare how to distribute now the division will follow the auction procedure auction procedure and why auction procedure now because the goals of the people in their life differs my goal of my life is not same as your goal of your life so since the goals of people in their life differs hence they may choose different resources to satisfy their goal accordingly they are given some some claim cells claim cells you can understand some items based on the available resources in the island each one of them is likely to have different preferences and their preferences will determine on what they wish to spend their claim cells right you cannot understand until and unless i give you certain concrete examples in an island you can find many resources for example you can find jungle you can find seashore you can find agricultural land you can find uh, you know 
uh, what I will say, you can grudging, gr gr you know, grudging field. There are many resources in an island, right? Now, out of 10, right, if you ask the preference that what, what, what is that they want to be? What is the goal of their life? Now, out of 10, some may say that they want to engage with farming. Right? Now, if their goal is farming, then they may choose items relating to the agricultural land. I said, resources of that island will be converted into a list of items. List of items. I said, uh, one item can be seashore, one item agricultural land, one item can be jungle. These are the resources actually. One item can be, you know, grazing field, so on and so forth. So there are different items. So the resources will be converted into different items. And people will give him a chance to select the items which is required to satisfy their goal in their life. So out of 10, suppose four people, they are interested in farming, their goal of life is the farming, hence they opted items that is relating to the agricultural land. Now, another three people, they wanted to set up a dairy farm and accordingly, they opted items relating to the cattle and the grazing field. Then the rest three I said 10 people, no? the rest three, they wanted to engage with fishing. Now they opted items relating to the sea beaches, right? Now if people will opt items, what can satisfy the goal of their life, then only the distribution will create, or sorry, the distribution of resources with the precondition or, or sorry, uh, the distribution of resources with equal opportunity can give individual a scope to convert those resources into the welfare, right? Suppose I am not interested in agriculture. I am not interested in agriculture. But I am given a portion of agricultural land because of equal distribution without taking note of a preference. For example, if the entire agricultural land will be divided by the 10 people, then I will get one tenth of agricultural land, but I am not interested in agriculture. In that situation, one tenth agricultural land, that that land will not produce anything for me because I am not interested in, in, in that. Hence, I cannot convert these resources into my, into welfare. I cannot convert that agricultural land 
into my welfare that is of no use so one thing that we learn from this equality of resources is that the distribution of resources must accompany the preferences then these resources can be converted into welfare right so now i think you can you can get this sense right so there is a auction system what is a auction system that they have to say what they want to be and what they requires what they want to be and what they requires so after everything is known their goal their requirement is known then the distribution will begin now in this manner each one will get bid for different resources in accordance with one's ambition and each one will end up with a bundle of resources after that principles of equal distribution will be followed right now once it is known that four individuals are interested in agriculture and they have obtained the items of agriculture then the agricultural land will be distributed among those four individuals and they can use that agricultural land they can convert that resources into their welfare now once it is decided there only three people they are interested in dairy farm and they have obtained the items relating to the cattle and grazing field then that kind of resources will be divided among these three right and this process will you know follow so what we get from this that this equality of resources it can bring equality only when the distribution of resources will be based on the preferences of the individual why i mean what is the importance of that preferences that importance is that if the individual has opted the resources then he can convert that resources into welfare that's the main point however critic of equality of resources critics have pointed out two possible problems in this system of equality of resources and what is the problem pass in the real world it is difficult to imagine that everyone would be similarly endowed with natural assets now they are saying that rolls and dorkins they have taken that every individuals are naturally gifted and they are nat nat they are, they are equals they are equals because all of them are naturally gifted this is not truth every individuals are not endowed with natural assets nature has not given all individual the same talents in the real world you will not find it and the second this system does not take care of differently endowed person 
now this distribution right this distribution of resources or, or, or equality of resources does not talk about or does not take care of physically handicapped individual right now a person who is physically challenged may require special need and resources otherwise he or she may not convert these resources into welfare suppose one individual is physically challenged but his goal is to become a agriculturalist a, i mean agriculturalist now if that person who is physically challenged if that physically challenged person will not be given external help special treatment external facility then that person cannot convert the resources into welfare so these are two major problem with this system now responding to the critic dorkins says that one way out from this problem would be to compensate to that individual for his or her natural disadvantage now dorkins is saying that if that individual is naturally disadvantaged then that individual will be compensated and the compensation would would be derived from the common pool of resources before it is auctioned so before the resources get divided before that compensation amount amount of compensation certain amount of resources will be subtracted from the overall resources and that resources will be there to compensate a person who is naturally disadvantaged so this is the response of dorkins to the critic of equality of resources so the important aspect of this uh you know distributive equality first is the utilitarian equality second one is the distributive equality uh in in other words right so first i said that equality of welfare that is known as the utilitarian equality second i said uh equality of resources that is uh, also known as uh, you know distributive equality so the main aspect of distributive equality is to create a situation giving a opportunity to individual so that that individual can convert resources into the welfare so that's why this distributive equality take note of the preferences of various agents or stakeholders now the third uh you know type of equality is the capability i mean equality of capability equality of capability in the context of capability what does that equality mean now equality of capability is the contribution of amartya sen to the welfare of human society right and the main intention of equality of capability is to develop the abilities of the individual right 
so likewise the main intention of distributive equality is a, is the fair distribution of resources and the fair distribution of resources means distribution based on the preferences and utilitarian equality means now producing the happiness right now amurtya sen he argues that neither utilitarian equality nor distributive equality sufficiently capture the difference among human being the real difference among human being now for him the agents i mean the individuals of such theories are generally deemed to be free equal and independent being both utilitarian equality and distributive equality it holds that individuals are free equal and independent beings but amartya sen does not accept it for him it is a lie individuals are not free all individuals are not free they are not equal and they are not independent instead to sen society is made of individuals with unequal abilities and needs unequal abilities and needs all individuals are not free they are in their life situation and their life situation is very much limited they are not equal they are not independent they are dependent on many things hence society is the constitution of individual who are unequal in abilities and needs so until and unless the unequal abilities of individual is addressed equality cannot be achieved despite of welfare policy or resource redistribution so for amartya sen the development of a individual is possible only when that individual is a able individual that individual is a skilled individual only distributing resources or only making some welfare policies or social justice policies is not enough is not enough for him the genuine equality the true equality will be possible only when the capability of individuals will be addressed the unequal abilities of individual as long as the unequal abilities of the individual is addressed equality cannot be achieved you may have welfare policies you may redistribute resources now the unequal ability of the individual can be addressed now how to equalize the unequal abilities of the individual so until and unless you don't equalize the unequal abilities of the individual equality cannot be achieved now amurtya sen is coming to the skill of the individual ability of that individual if individual is able then he can convert the resources that has been given to him by the principles of redistribution if he if he will have capability skill then he can convert those resources into their welfare now to amartya sen this unequal abilities of the individual can be addressed through inclusive education inclusive education which should ensure the full development of human potential now these are the various characteristic of inclusive 
education. A inclusive education must ensure the full development of human potential. It must provide a sense of dignity and self-worth to all individuals and it must strengthen respect for human diversity. So these are the three main character of inclusive education. Now through inclusive education or the three main goals of inclusive education what are the three main goals of inclusive education? First, it must ensure the full development of human personality or human potentiality. It must provide a sense of dignity and self-worth to all individuals. It must strengthen respect for human diversity. diversity. If all these characters are there, then it is called the inclusive education and through inclusive education, unequal abilities of the individual can be equalized to greatest extent. And once individuals are capable, skilled, then they may convert resources into welfare and the genuine equality can be prevailed. Now, inclusive education must encapsulate following capabilities. Inclusive education must encapsulate following capabilities. What are the capabilities that inclusive education must address? Now, it must enhance the academic skill that is critical thinking, problem solving skill, knowledge of participation in society and economy. Inclusive education must enhance, enhance life and social development skill. Life and social development skill. And this skill is possible through the informal learning through the infor informal learning. So inclusive education is both formal and informal. Many things that you learn from the informal setting. No institution can teach you the life, life skill or social development skill. It is your mixing with the society that will teach you the life skill that will teach you the social development skill. Now the inclusive education must enhance the individual autonomy. It must prepare individuals to make his or her own choices. It must prepare individual to be responsible for his or her choices. Inclusive education must create individuals or produce individual who will respect for evolving capa capacities. That means inclusive education must take away the jealousness from the individual, the established capabilities must develop respect for the emerging capabilities and that inclusive Education must be directed towards respecting the inherent dignity of the individual. That inclusive education must provide voice 
and participation of people in learning inclusive education must preserve the identity of various individual overall this inclusive education must protect the self esteem of all learners self esteem self worth inclusive education must foster a confidence in the individual that they are unique many things they can contribute to the society so this is all about your equality of capability mostly this is given by the amartya sen the earlier two that is equality of resources it is mostly contributed by dorkins and equality of welfare it is mainly the contribution of jimmy bentham so this is all about your equality of what equality of welfare equality of resources equality of capability in the context of welfare what does that equality means it means happiness producing happiness the state must produce the happiness in the context of resources what does that equality mean it means a fair distribution of resources and when i'm saying fair distribution of resources it means distribution of resources on the preferences of various individuals and in the context of capability what does that equality mean in the context of capability equality means inclusive education so this is all about your equality of what so thank you thank you very much